Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Sylvia and I make videos on planning with the occasional review. Today's video is going to be about my A6 notebook cover. You guys I'm telling you there's a shift happening because we are going into fall and the weather is changing and it's starting to get colder and it's messing with my body. That always happens to me. So I'm going to try my best not to have severe breathing and asthma. <laughs> Forgive me. And also not to be clearing my throat and coughing through this video. And there might be a lot of cuts and it is what it is. Okay. So I wanted to make this video about my A6 notebook cover and it is a traveler's notebook. Um, I wanted to talk about it and basically I wanted to have a reference video in case somebody asked me about it later, I could just refer them to this video. And I also am going to talk a little bit in detail about some things that as a planner community and people who have been following my channel for a while probably already know, but bear with me because it is for other people who are new that have asked in the past. Okay, and I want to be somewhat thorough. So let's start by talking about the struggle and how it is real. <laughs> this is a, I just took this off and I don't know why I should have left it on so you could know. Hmm, where did I put it? Found it. It was on the floor. Okay, so this is a Leuchtturm 1917 A6 pocket. And I get a lot of confusion by that, okay, because it does say pocket and it, it does say A6. So what does that even mean? Basically, it means that it's a hybrid, okay? It has the height of an A6, but the width of of a pocket and that's stupid and annoying and damn it, it works. It works like term, it works and I love it. So that causes a lot of confusion and a lot of struggles for people like myself trying to find covers for this or wanting to put it in a traveler's notebook. So here I have a Shakespeare's uh, traveler's notebook. This is in pocket size, also known as filled note size. And I hate this cover, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I've talked about it in the past. Um, it was a really bad buy for me and it is what it is and since then I am not a fan of Shakespeare. It's cool if you are, no worries. I have lost a lot of faith in traveler's notebook companies. I never get the type of leather I want. I'm never really that satisfied and it always been, ends up being a very expensive regret. So instead of trying to go through this and buy something even more expensive to get custom, I thought I'm not even sure if I'm going to use a cover. So maybe I should just try to use something I have. And like I just mentioned, what I have is this notebook cover that I'm sure people think is beautiful and love, but I don't. And it just kind of sits on my shelf and it is what it is. I've never sold it because the amount of dings and indentations it gets is out of control. And who the hell would want that? Maybe someone, but I don't know. And so I've always just kept it and I use it to reference when I want to try to make my own pockets out of leather I already have or if I'm cutting something down, which is what I did for my new cover. Okay, so this has four elastics on the inside and like I mentioned, it is a pocket. Now a lot of people like Chic Sparrow because they do like these Lord Term uh, 1917 A6 pockets and this actually will fit an A6 pocket. Um, it comes exactly to the edge here and here and it barely misses the old school pen loop. This is like the original Traveler's Notebook uh, Darcy's so I know they have different pen loops now. I don't know how it would work with that but it barely misses it so it works in here. So let me show you how that looks. I usually keep it on the center. String. And there you go, you can see that it fits almost perfectly here and here. Um, it misses this little guy, but if you're someone who likes to put uh, tabs on the top and on the sides, that can become a problem. And if you're gonna throw it in your purse, it's probably going to rip these up because there's no extra protection. So what I did was I remembered that I had a traveler's notebook that I have never used in personal size, what I consider personal size. At the time I bought this, I bought it on AliExpress. I think it was $19. I looked today, it's $23, but on sale for $17.99. Again, at the time, which was about a year ago, that I purchased this, it came in the sizes small, medium, large, and extra large. 
I think that's correct. <laughs> small was passport size. Medium is what I'm calling personal size. Large was regular, also known as uh, narrow, also known as number six, also known as standard or narrow. <laughs> I think I covered all of them. And then extra large was A5 size. Today when I looked, they have passport size and then they have what they're calling portable size. And that's what the personal and medium size used to be. <laughs> so it's really confusing. I understand. Why do people keep changing shit? I don't know. They don't have anything better to do. And then they have standard size and then they have A5. So portable is what I, I'm calling this, which is also personal and medium <laughs> size. So basically what I wanted to do was to cut this a little bit taller than this filled notes because I like how this comes to the edge of the book. I just needed it to be a little bit taller. So you can see that this pocket, also known as filled note size, fits exactly inside of this black traveler's notebook with a slight edge around it all the way. And that's just what I wanted. No more, no less. You can certainly cut it taller if you want to. You cannot um, have it wider. I didn't cut anything off of the edge here, just off of the height. So this Traveler's Notebook for $19 when I purchased it also came with three inserts and they're all sewn. And I went ahead and I cut down the bottom and instead of cutting them to filled notes sized or pocket sized notebooks, I went ahead and cut them the same height as these Lloyd Term 1917A6 pocket. <laughs> and I didn't have to cut anything off of the side, so they're exactly about the same, give a millimeter or two, um, as this hardcover Lloyd Term. Now you might want to put a little piece of tape or even washi tape down here so that these don't start to unravel like this one a little bit did. I have not put tape on these before. I have not put tape, gosh, is that even English? I've decided not to put tape on these before and they've never unraveled on me. I've also put tape on them and they were fine too. So it's either or in my opinion, you do you. Now this will fit four of these inserts in here, but with the A6 Loic Term hardcover, it will only fit two of these guys in here. So if you're someone who really likes, um, Penguin Paper Co. They have like the 80 page inserts and then the 160 of the new type of Tomoe River paper. I think that you could fit two of the 80, but only one of the 160 with this guy in here. Okay. So the inserts that came with this was a daily, which is really nice. And at the bottom here, it had this, like you see this plain square. It had a plain square here for you to write whatever you want. So that's all it got cut off. So that was nice. None of the um, none of the time ladder got cut off at all, and this is just like a kind of Hobonichi style, which is kind of cool. Very light grid, cream colored paper. And again, they're sewn, which is really nice because they will um, lie flat. And then this one is kind of dark, and I really don't like how dark the grid is. It looks like it's five millimeter, uh, but this is going to be used as like a companion notebook, more like scratch paper than anything else, so it's not that serious. For some reason, this paper is a lot lighter than the other two. This is a square grid, which um, the actual ink on here is lighter, but it's more cream colored paper. And they have a bunch of different designs. I think they have like a free monthly and weekly that you can purchase um, with the link I'm gonna give you down below. So I'm just going to take out the planner one and just put these two in here to show you how it looks with the A6 pocket. Now I do recommend that if you're only gonna keep these two inserts in here and one of these, that you tie your uh, elastics really tight. I wasn't sure at the time, so I think I'm gonna go back and cut off a little bit of this and tie it a little tighter because it is kind of loosey-goosey without a third notebook in here. So let me show you the third notebook actually. And this, and then I will take it out and show you the difference. I like to keep my elastic in the back so that it doesn't bother my actual pages, tear into them or anything like that. So this is with three inserts and the A6 pocket. In the front, 
it looks just fine. When you turn it to the back, you can see that there's a little bit of overhang, planner peak. Not a fan of that. Some people don't mind that, especially if it's in the back. It's not that serious. So you do you. But um, yeah, it's not who I am as a person. So I'm going to take out this third insert. And you can see that this moves around a little bit. If you pull on this elastic, because again, I'm going to make it tighter, it doesn't move. And it's just fine. So recommend that for two inserts and the A6 cover. And if my camera can get it together to focus, you can see that there's just a little bit up here. So you can go ahead and put tabs. Nothing on the side because that's how I like mine. And then some here on the bottom. So this is just a really nice perfect fit. If you close it up, you can see that it pinches a little bit the leather. If you're concerned about it pinching the leather and making indentations or you know digging into your inserts, I usually keep a pen here and then the elastic rests on the plastic of the pen and that doesn't happen so it's not that serious and this looks really great. So this originally was a one string personal uh, traveler's notebook and um, you can see the hole there. I punctured a hole here and I wanted to see if I could do it with one string, but to be perfectly honest, I didn't like that. Um, for those of you, again, that have been here a while, you probably already know this, but for all the newbies um, <laughs> that have questions, I'm gonna do this quickly for you, so bear with me. For those people who are wondering about piggybacking, you find the center of your inserts and you can put an elastic in here. This is the one that actually came with um, this personal traveler's notebook. And then they're piggybacked together and this allows you to put two notebooks on one string. So this is how it works when you have one string in your traveler's notebook, just like that and then they're in there. And so I had one elastic and I just, I hated the way it worked in there. And I was like, no, I want four. <laughs> so I ended up putting in more holes. And I don't know, I think I left it in the dining room table. I needed more sun that's in here. So that's why I, I cut it down in there. But it's a little bit longer than this, these little clasps. So it would, it would go right there and it, it basically hides um, the knot inside and it was just like one elastic. So I went ahead and I punctured two more holes on either side and went with four elastics. And there are a lot of videos out there that show you how to do that if you need help. I was taking this apart and I don't know why. So anyway, that is my new A6 uh, cover for my A6 pocket Loic term 1917 and I'm loving it. I'm loving it because this is an oil tan leather so it's very soft and supple and beautiful. It has nape on the inside so if you're someone who wants to buy the Traveler's Company sticker pockets they will work nicely in here. They will not in a Chic Sparrow with this type of leather because it doesn't have anything to hold on to and it just makes this really awful annoying sound when you move it because it's peeling off all the time. Um, of course if you order pockets you don't need to worry about that. Also, I was really sick and tired of ordering a traveler's notebook in black because it's classic and what I love and getting really ugly, stiff, hard, awful, awful leather um, like this one. This is the Darcy and it's just more of like a, a natural leather that they end up dying without conditioning or anything, I suppose. Um, that's what it seems like. Again, this was a bad buy for me because I should always go with black because look at this beautiful blue notebook and putting it in here with this like wine, um, it just looks clownish it's crazy the colors don't match well and black you know it goes with everything and I've got it recently in my head that I want to buy every color of Leuchtturm over the years and have them all sitting in a rainbow on my shelf and so the best notebook cover to have is a black cover and the other great thing is if you're not like me the uh the link I'm going to put down below I think they have seven different colors in this series to choose from so you don't have to go with black which is fantastic that they have a different range and if you're someone who wants a b6 size 
then I would recommend buying an A5 notebook and then cutting it down to B6 so that you can have the width because you're certainly not going to get that with a standard size. That would be more close to a B6 slim and even then you probably would have to cut off some of the side. So I do recommend that if you're feeling brave or you're used to cutting your own uh, traveler's notebooks down that you buy one of these because again they're pretty inexpensive around $17.99 right now and you cut it down yourself and I just used a ruler of course I used a metal ruler a rotary blade and uh, one of these Signo pens in white so that I could mark it so I could see it better I do recommend that you cut it face down so the nape doesn't get in your way and you cut it you know crooked or anything like that and I also had of course um what's it called a board underneath what are they called <laughs> A mat is what I meant to say. I had a mat underneath so I didn't cut through my table. Do not cut through your table <laughs> or your desk. And that's everything. And I think it looks great. Now, these little holes don't bother me, but I was thinking about getting a charm, you know, tying a knot and running it through the inside and putting another charm there to cover them. But even if I didn't, I think it still works perfect. It's the size I wanted. It's the type of leather I wanted and the color I wanted. And it didn't cost me anything because I already had it sitting in my shelf waiting for me to use. And these little notebooks are going to get used also. So this was a great buy and this is why I never freak out too much when I buy stuff I don't use because I always come back to it eventually. So this is what I recommend to all of you if you are looking for something inexpensive. I also want to mention that this is not directly centered because I didn't feel the need to recenter it because I did cut off the bottom and I don't think it looks terrible or crazy. Um, it's slightly off center and it doesn't bother me at all, but you can fix that if you want another hole in your, in your leather. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention before I go, gosh, I can't remember what it was. I thought it was important. I might write it down in the description if I don't remember. I think the other thing I was just going to say is if this works out for a while and I can carry this in here, I might end up going ahead and buying a more expensive custom to get exactly what I want if I know I'm going to actually use it. So there's that. All right. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope that this was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.